Hello out there. You are very much welcome to the program. Exclusive personality on ACNN television reaching you from the nation's capital, Abuja. Exclusive personality is a program designed to educate, inform, and transform members of the Republic through the experiences of the notable personalities who have distinguished themselves in this life through hard work, diligence, and the grace of God. It is also a program designed to treat some topical issues concerning faith, ideologies, and the state of affairs and the polity. Our guest for today is not just a church father, but also an evangelist, a preacher, a revivalist, the Anglican Bishop of Akokedo, the Right Reverend Jolly Onyebun. The Right Reverend Jolly Onyebun was also the immediate past national coordinator of the Anglican Youth Fellowship. You are welcome to the program, my Lord. Thank you so much. We thank, thank God for everything. Thank you very much, my Lord. My Lord, uh, uh, you agree with me that, of course, uh, the name Bishop Jolly Onyebun is a very global one. But there are some people who would like to know whom you are to hear from you. Now, my Lord, my question is, who is Bishop Jolly Onyebun? Tell us. Thank God for this privilege, and uh, I think it's a very difficult thing to do when you have to introduce yourself, <laughs> because you will not know what the people want to hear and um, what you don't want, what they don't want to hear. <laughs> but by God's grace, for the purpose of this program, I will say I am uh, Jolly Ejato uh, Yekme, the Bishop of Akokwedo Anglican Diocese in the ecclesiastical province of Bende. And uh, I was born uh, in the year 1966, September 7 to be precise. And I want to tell you that God has been the one. So whatever I'm saying is because of him. Yes. If not, maybe I should have been long forgotten from this planet Earth. Uh, I had my parents as teachers, though both of them are of blessed memory. I lost my father when I was 10 years, and my mother died not too long ago. Uh, they, they were both teachers, and we were, we are, we were seven, uh, five boys and two girls. And I happened to be in the perfect middle. Two boys before a girl, then me, a girl, then two boys. <laughs> uh, that is the uniqueness I talk about. That's right. That it's just God. Even though our eldest brother is now late, so we are remaining six. Uh, presently, I have a wife, if one female wife. <laughs> because that is very important, very important. important to me, <laughs> uh, who, uh, by God's grace, is uh, a magistrate. Uh, they call them uh, special grade in Edo State Judiciary. Uh, she is Victoria Emiloma uh, Oyekme. We are blessed with uh, four children, wow. three girls, and one boy. Wow. Uh, that's interesting. So much. That's interesting. Thank you very much, my Lord. Uh, my Lord, uh, looking at what um, how you started from a humble background and the grace of God have led you to be whom you are. Can you just tell us uh, um, your early days and your educational background? Because uh, Jolly Nyebben did not just become a bishop. No, you passed through process of life, the things you passed through your early days of life and, of course, your educational background. We thank God. It's been God all the way, like I said, and I will not stop acknowledging that. Uh, I went to primary school at St. Paul's Anglican Primary School, Iroekme. That is my hometown. Uh, it was when I was to go to the secondary school that my father died. Uh, so I went through secondary school in a boarding house system. Annunciation Catholic College, Irua. It was a popular uh, uh, school at that time, I think up to the 90s. Uh, there I met with some friends, uh, where of course you have to 
create a way for yourself, especially when you didn't have a father directing you. As so I met with some friends who were just doing our own thing and thinking we were young. And at that level, I began to know how to jump fences and how to <laughs> watch films and all that. And then, uh, even though in the school we had uh, this scripture union, we were also attending, but we just know we we're not serious minded as at that point. From the secondary school, when I graduated, I needed to slow down for my senior ones because it was only my mother that was sponsoring us. I had to go to a free school then, they call it School of Agri, Bende State School of Agri, Awan Asaba. Since it was not expensive, instead of wasting time, I had to be there. And then I got my OND, upper credits, from that school, which gave me the privilege to apply to the university for my first degree, uh, direct entry. And that was uh, Obafemi Awolowo University, Leife. Great Ife. Great Ife. Uh, there I spent four years instead of five years for the course since I came through direct entry. And I graduated in 1989-90, served in uh, Ogun State. But why in Ife something unique happened to me? Because going to Ife was because I wanted to go and... Uh, be great in the world, in quote, because in the School of Agri, I met friends and we were very excited with this Pawandrikas Club. And so we were all over Pawandrikas Club and I told myself, if I go to Ife, since Great Ife is the headquarter for Pawandrikas Club, when I get there, I will do so well so that I become chief of the world. <laughs> and, uh, but my first month on campus, that is uh, November 1986. There was this University Joint Christian Mission Evangelical Crusade for newcomers. The theme for that uh, crusade was uh, New Beginning. And that was how God gave me a new beginning. Mm. I gave my life to Christ. Mm. The first month on campus. And from then till now, I have been in the lot. So it was in the process. Maybe I will have time to say some things about That's my Christian right. life later. Exactly. In the process, I had this call that I came to Ife because God wanted to make me serviceable in his vineyard. And from there, I went to train in Emmanuel College immediately after my service here in Ogun State. Uh, after my training at Manuel College, I was seconded or posted to Sabogida Radausis, okay. where I was ordained by the late Most Reverend Albert Adulojo Agbaje. And within the uh, period of serving, I enrolled for my master's program at Abosita. Okay, my Lord, the Agbaje, the former Bishop of Bende. The former Bishop of Bende. Okay. Uh, I got my master's program from Ambrosali University at Boma, where I also put in for my PhD, but that had to hang because of so many activities on my head. Mm. And again, I was telling myself, I'm just running this agri thing. What am I going to do with it eventually? <laughs> Except I decided to switch, but I'm thinking that maybe it's important to do such a thing. So for now, I have a master's degree in agriculture, crop science, to crop be precise. Science. Mm. Thank you very much, my lord. That's an interesting uh, academic background, and that is where you are today. Uh, my lord, uh, seeing an agriculturist yeah. um, becoming a bishop, um, something must have happened. Can you just tell us your journey so far in ministry? Oh, <laughs> it's been God again, like I said. But for God's grace, I don't know if I would have graduated from campus with the style I was trying to follow or adopt, or with the path I would have followed. Uh, but while on campus, my first year, I joined Anglican Youth Fellowship, now Anglican Student Fellowship. So I ran through that. In the process, I was made a whole rep. Later, I was made the prayer secretary of the fellowship. 
and then by 89 I was made the president of the fellowship. So all that became a kind of spiritual build up for me with all those church fathers then, two of them who discipled me and the process I started hearing from God, knowing what God will want you to do, what God want, will not want you to do. So at some point I received that calling that I am going to be an Anglican priest. You can imagine I was never an art student. So I didn't even do CROK in my secondary school. It's purely God's conviction that this is what you are going to do. I remembered one, when I got that conviction during the administration of one church father who eventually left us, uh, the Archbishop Onibere. Oh, yeah. He's still alive, but he has his own ministry. He had to sign my diary to confirm that this call was true. Uh, by the time we got to Emmanuel College, God helped us. The Evangelical Fellowship were privileged to be leaders. And when we came out, we saw that we have to be in the church. That is how it all started. And then we got this ordination, like I said, from Baba Agbaje. Agbaje. As a deacon, he priested me, sent me to one or two places including the chapel in the University of Ambrosali, where I was chaplain for six full years. And uh, the Lord actually helped us to do so much there as uh, He wanted. It was after that I was posted out to serve in parishes. Then eventually I was sent to Akoko Edo to serve in one of the parishes and headed an adikiri. Uh, it was in the process that uh, the area was carved out from Sabogidara okay, with Esa. So it was Esa. one old Sabogidara Dasis. One old Sabogidara Dasis. It was in the process, the area was carved out as a diocese, including Esako, our twin diocese. And to God be the glory, I was made bishop. So that was in the year 2007. Since then till now, about 15 years running, I have been a bishop. I was made bishop at 40. Wow. And uh, like I said, it's all God. I can't even understand myself. I, I just know God was interested mm. in me. Can't just see that's just God's grace and a humble beginning. Well done, my Lord. My Lord, looking at what you've just said in ministry, uh, uh, there must be some mentors you must have had. Can you just share us? Uh, share with us those mentors and how they have impacted in your lives. Yes, starting from my university days, I had two brothers, or let me say three of them, who showed interest in my life in the Anglican Student Fellowship or AYF then. And uh, at a point they had this school of disciples. And when we see school of disciples today, I just smile. Say this thing started long, oh, long time ago. It's not today. It's something. not today. One of them is uh, Asupuro Kembo. He and the family they are in the U.S. now. The other one is Godwin Sado. He and the family I think they are in Canada. Then we have uh, Emmanuel Okoro. That one is based in Lagos. So they actually opened our understanding about the scriptures. As I speak with them, I am still in contact with two of them fully, and that is Asipuro uh, Kimbo and Emmanuel Koro. We still share experiences. That was where my uh, mentorship started. Well, after that, when I became a priest, I had mentors, but I will not fail to mention Baba most reverend Akin Yemi, okay. retired Peter. bishop of Ibomina Diocese and the archbishop of Kwara. He actually was his mentor to us because he walked around our university area that is in uh, Ibarra Diocese. We're talking of Ife area, Jebu Jesha, and all those places where he was when he was a venerable. He walked in Ibada as a venerable and he showed interest in the fellowship we were organizing. So all the places he walked, he would invite us to come and do rural evangelism and in the process, 
put us through in so many things. So I fell in love with that teaching. He had been there even up to today. He is still my father. He knows so. so he was actually there doing so much for me as a, as a son in the Lord. So I can mention those people that uh, actually mentored me spiritually. We, we, that, that's an interesting word. I, my Lord, uh, in fact, we have heard much about you. I think when somebody talks about Jolly, they will know that, yes, indeed, they have known you. We, we, have, we want to, at this point, go a little bit in faith because this program borders mainly on faith and, of course, ideologies. My Lord, uh, Anglican communion, of course, we believe in sacrament. Yeah. And uh, you also agree with me that uh, there are many sacraments, but I think Anglican upholds too. Yeah. Now, uh, my Lord, first of all, let us know what is sacrament. There are people out there that may not know what sacrament is all about. And uh, what are the ones that Anglican uh, are upholding? And why are they upholding those ones? And the ones they are not upholding, why are they not upholding them? Let's hear what from you, my Lord. Well, uh, the, when you talk about sacraments, we are talking about outward and uh, visible signs of uh, inward and spiritual grace given to us by Christ Jesus as sure and certain means by which we receive this grace. And you know what grace is. Grace is a merited favor. Something just like you, you are my Lord. Just share that you are very bishop yes, at the age of 40. I mean, that should be an extravagant it's grace. Not, uh, you know? It's not by power at all. Yeah. So this, uh, for there are about seven but we in the Anglican Church, we uphold two, and that has to do with um, the Holy uh, Communion and then the Baptism. Those are the two we uphold in the Anglican Communion. communion. It has so many names, Eucharist and the Rite. And then when you look at the Baptism, for instance, that talks about uh, welcoming, initiation, in bringing these people, somebody, into Christ. And uh, the outward, uh, what is it called, the outward uh, visible and visible sign is the water which you are baptized with. And then the invisible sign has to do with you being dead in Christ. That is why you see you are immersed into the water and then you you rise up uh, with him by way of resurrection. Then for the Holy Communion, we are talking about the outward sign is the the wine and the bread. The bread. Then the inward uh, and the inward uh, invisible sign has to do with the blood and the body of Christ. Because we we are not take, we don't believe we are taking ordinary wine and water, and water or bread, rather it is the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, uh, other uh, whatever like penances that is uh, forgiving events of sin, uh, marriages and all that we don't see them as sacrament as so in the Anglican. Why, my Lord? Uh, well, I what will I say more than we see this as the basic basis of Christianity, talking about baptism and Holy Eucharist. So we are not seeing others as sacrament per se. My Lord, some scholars, are, say, are, some scholars are saying that uh, it's because Jesus instituted this. That is why Anglican is upholding it. Because when you look at the Holy Communion, Jesus instituted and said, yes. do it in remembrance of me and yes, baptism. baptism. It, would that, it, will it be the reason why Anglican is upholding it? Yes, it's part of it. It's part of it because Jesus instituted these ones. And uh, all of that, like we are saying, they come in from doctrines and from what people believe about the scriptures. Please, uh, for, for your emphasis, my Lord is not saying doses are not capital of sacrament. No, no. But for the reason of Anglican communion or for that basis, we uphold those two because Jesus himself instituted it. Not that others are not sacraments, not but Anglican communion opposed these two because Jesus instituted them and also encouraged us to do the same. Sir. Thank you very much, my Lord. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, my Lord, uh, we, we look at the issue of uh, um, uh, Holy Week. 
Um, Holy Week starts with Palm Sunday. Mm. Um, um, Hosanna, Hosanna. Shouting. But my Lord, you look at the, uh, the how ironical people can be. The same man saying Hosanna as this is the seven days or few days, let us say, crucify him. But now, my Lord, my question. Mm. We discovered that part of the Holy Week is Monday, Thursday. Yeah. And uh, I know that in Anglican communion, that uh, on Monday, Thursday after service, the, 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 the altar is being stripped. stripped the quality yeah. is stripping of uh, altar. Mm. And that was it is enshrined in page 138 of okay. the book of common prayer yeah. can you tell us my lord why do anglican do that and what is the significance of that stripping the altar on monday thursday thank you so much before i answer i must tell you that holy week is a week that we have to take so seriously as christians like i tell people even this last time i still told people if you don't have time to look through Holy Week and look through the Gospels to see how Jesus suffered, you begin to feast programs on the Good Friday, wedding, burial, uh, what's it called, birthdays. It, on the day that the most supreme and superior sacrifice was made for us as Christians, I say, you are not a serious Christian. Because it should, even in the kingdom of darkness, from our experience, sir, they said to us clearly that, in the kingdom of darkness, they said that it's a day they don't carry out any activity. Hmm. It's a low one for them because that sacrifice was a supreme one. They don't, demons say they don't do anything. Hmm. But human beings who we serve Christ, we yet want to make the place so busy. Well, back to your question. Yes, sir. Monday, Thursday, Two things we remember when we are doing Monday Thursday. First, that Jesus Christ instituted the Holy Communion, the Last Supper with the disciples, and said we should do it in remembrance of, of him. And you know, the next one was that it was after that supper that the devil entered Judah Iscariot, and he went out to betray Jesus, and then came back with an army and with swords and knives to come and arrest the master and he betrayed him with a kiss the whole disciple deserted him in fact the bible records that everyone deserted him and then they took the master away so we stripped the altar for two major reasons okay uh, the first one is we make the church look so lame in preparation of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. So we make the, the place look solemn, all the colorings, the clothes, everything in the church, we put them down. Even the lights be switched, switched off. So life is switched off, and people go away in darkness to so make the place solemn. And in so bad. Prepare, so by preparation for Good Friday, okay. and also to give us a picture of what happened when the soldiers arrested him. So my Lord, that's why I say it's not a moment of celebration. At all. We should be very, very solemn, sober, and we reflect on this supreme sacrifice made for us by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So we, also everywhere is scattered, reminds you that after the arrest, everywhere, nobody was there, everybody went away. So those two things, very important, that's why this stripping of the altar. Is then, my Lord, do you agree with some uh, church fathers and theological scholars that said that even on that day that we also talk about uh, Jesus washing feet, that is illustrating the aspect of humility of exactly. Jesus. Is that correct? Very, very correct. That's another aspect uh, I didn't mention earlier, that when they finished eating, Jesus Christ had to come down and then did the washing of their feet. Even as a Lord and as Master. As a Lord and Master. That is a serious one. You really wonder how many of us are doing that today. For some people to greet us, they may need to kneel down, roll on the floor. <laughs> some people to see us, they may have to wait three hours and all that. But this Lord and Master, mm. giving us an example, decided to stoop to watch the disciples' feet. And that again shows that it's humility. Mm. Mm. Thank you very much, my Lord. Thank you so much. Uh, my Lord, uh, there are many um, opinions of uh, teachings of uh, Christ's finished work salvation oh, and more of all hallelujah. that. But my Lord, you are going to attend to that question when we come back for a break. Okay. Please, viewers, do join us again. Crossfire is a program that treats controversial topics 
on diverse issues surrounding the family, church, and society. Does it mean if a woman now prays with her hair uncovered, God will not honor the prayer? Should single ladies ask single guys out on a date? It's not a sign of desperation. Okay. It's you knowing what you want mm -hmm. and going for it. Okay. You, you can't tell me that, that comedy in the church is wrong. Wait, by our, if our, you our go our through our church of Nigeria hymn now, now, you will see so many hymns written by Nigerians. You know, a man is seeing something here, he's going for something else. Mm -hmm. Men are confused. That's why I said you have to help them out. We are saying something. Okay, sir. okay. Mm -hmm. sir, can you stop a bird from flying? Depending. But we are not instituting, we are forgiven. No, no, you have forgiven, yes. but that forgiveness amounts to a criminal offense. How? How? Hold on. That's, that's that's what what my brother, anybody can be if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? It eh? matters so. Eh? No, 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 I'm not saying nobody is destroying any foundation here. Eh? Glad to know that you are still there. If you are just joining us, this is exclusive personality on Anglican Cable Network Nigeria, reaching you from the nation's capital here in Abuja. Our guest has been the Right Reverend Jolly Ehiato Onyeben. He's the Anglican Bishop of Dice of Akokedo and immediate past national coordinator of the Anglican Youth Fellowship. My Lord, you're also here. Thank you very Thank much for being with us. Thank you so much <laughs> for this you. opportunity. Thank you, my Lord. My Lord, before we went on break, you we are about to answer the question on the issue of the finished work of salvation because people, oftentimes, they don't know what it means. We just want to treat it so that people will understand when they talk about salvation, what it means and what Christ has done for us on that cross. What actually is Christ's finished work of salvation? Sorry, I will just first start by saying, me, I'm Christ's finished work on, on You are starting on, from on yourself. Salvation. That's, that, that's a if good one. If not for Christ, I wonder where I would have been. Yes, sir. Yes, because yes, sir. there are some of these things you just know it is not you. Well, coming back to the scriptures, we're told that Jesus Christ declared when he was giving the vinegar instead of water to drink, that it is finished. It is finished. That should be John 19.30. It is finished. Which means all that have been prophesied. All that the, the Lord God Almighty planned for mankind's salvation was accomplished. All that had to do with sacrifices for sin, for deliverance, was accomplished, was completed fully mm. by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on the cross. That is why he declared it is finished. Just imagine if Jesus did not finish the work, he, he, there were some remaining. remaining. If Jesus did not deal with witches, that was the only one remaining. Or if Jesus did not deal with uh, our cleansing of sin, cleansing of, they say one aspect was remaining. It means it was all useless because the scripture says, if you do all and you have a fault in one, that's all over. Imagine if Jesus did not finish with the work on the cross. Where would the breakthrough be? Where would the deliverance be from wicked men? From all the terrible things we face, whether in our society today, where would the breakthrough come from? The it healing, will, where will the it come healing. from? It is the finished work mm. of the Lord, and we praise God that He finished it. In my place, we have this uh, song that says, "I am now so comfortable, I am now at peace, because Jesus finished the work. I no longer will need to buy ram." I no longer will need to buy turtle yes, dove yes, for sacrifice. Mm. You know how it would have looked like if Jesus didn't finish that aspect. And I will go to church today to make sacrifices of cows or zee and, and all that. The altar then was not a, a, a good sight to behold. You, you remember that only one person can go into the holies of holies. Once a year. Once in a year. And if, you, if the man is not careful, he may not come out alive. alive. Whatever. If you have seen an abattoir, 
you will understand the stench that co Cons was coming up. No wonder there was this recommendation of burning of incense. Essence. It was not just for any other thing except to cover the stench it's to a, 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 a level. minimal level, not to eradicate it not totally, my lord. Imagine the vultures, the bears who will come for all those mm. things. It's it, it's a, it's not a good sight to behold. So Jesus finished it, and I hope the viewers don't understand that. That's right. By God's grace, I know you are listening to us. I I want you to understand that Jesus finished the work. You don't need to join a court before you are accomplished in life. Jesus has finished on the cross. You don't need to begin to buy prayers here and there. Jesus finished the work. You don't need to run from pillar to post. Your sickness was taken care of. Poverty was taken care of. I believe strongly that even barrenness was taken care of. Amen. So whatever it is that you desire of the Lord, be bold. Meet the Lord because it has been finished. It's for you to be fruitful, for you to have breakthroughs in life, for you to live a healthy life, spiritual or physical. It's for you to live a life full of deliverance, a life full of salvation, a life that you should be rejoicing all about. You don't need to live in regret. God, uh, through the Lord Jesus Christ, finished that work. And I praise God He finished the work even for our villages our local government our states and our nation nigeria for the world jesus finished the work thank you very much my lord so my lord when people are saying that they are buying anointing oil oh. for fifty thousand, there's one hundred thousand. that is not biblical yeah. it's not they have not understood the finished yeah. work of salvation yeah they don't understand that i, I, I hope any, anybody hearing us will understand that we're not saying you can't use anointing oil yes you need you, to clear you, that you, you, you can use clear. anointing oil yes but by the time you are exchanging it with for money and all the likes, you are already deviating from the things of the Holy Spirit are not bought with money. That is why apostle the apostle says your money perish with you. You can't buy this of the Holy Spirit money. I met a brother not too long ago who had about three, four bottles of anointing oil, all for different uh, different uh, things. One for business. One for academic breakthrough, the other one for good health, and the other one general. And I was asking him, brother, if eventually you mistakenly use the one for business for gen uh, general, what happens? Then there will be Holy Ghost confusion. <laughs> yes, we should understand. Jesus finished the work. As a child of God, you could put your hands on anything, mm. a pro anointing oil, and it, it will be anointed heavily mm -hmm. because Jesus finish the work not for one man but for all of us jesus finished the work not for one man but for all of us just believe invite him and your life will never remain the same thank you very much my thank lord you, sir. Uh, my lord uh, enough of the fits and, and we know that of course this program also talks about the issue of what is happening in the polity yeah. you agree with me that uh, my lord saying the truth about nigeria is that if not the grace of God, we all may, be, may not be here. And looking at what is happening, my Lord, the incessant killings and what is happening. My Lord, let me ask, what do you think that has been the cause of these incessant killings and happening in the country? And what do you think that can be done to curtail it so that people will know that, yes, indeed, these are the solutions and what has been the cause? Are you really asking me to say the truth about our country? <laughs> of course, it's part of the program. <laughs> it's, it's just unfortunate. First of all, one of the things that we lack in our country is the fear of God. Mm. Many people do not fear God. I'm not talking about going to church or going to the mosque or doing one thing or the other. No. I'm talking about the reality about knowing that there is God who we are accountable to. Mm. Many people don't fear God. That is number one. The second aspect is that we don't respect human beings and the life that God has placed in humans. We don't respect it. If you compare us with the developed world, you will discover that even the ants, the pussycats, the dogs, they are more respected than we respect human beings in Nigeria. 
you, you, it is painful that somebody can just be killed and nobody's talking about it. The moment we succeed in taking some of these cases to court, it may be there for years. Nobody's attended to them. Sincerely, if you ask me, we have a problem in this nation. And we need to tell ourselves the truth. First, I want to say that our leaders need to brace up. They just need to know that if a country will be good, the leaders have great role to play. You know, when the leader is upright, when the leader is dedicated, when the leader is determined, I tell you, the things will flow mm. in that direction. I, I, it's true. I, I am not saying this. To, I won't apologize to anybody. It is the truth. Our leaders need to wake up to their responsibilities. Sincerely, our leaders have failed in so many areas. And it's not like it's an irredeemable situation. I can't say so. Uh, because at different levels, you just discover people are concerned about their, uh, themselves mm. and nothing else. And I hope people in this country know that it, it's not only human beings that are being kidnapped or that are being hold, held hostage. Even Nigeria has been held hostage by some people. Yes, sir. We have been held hostage. Yes, sir. Even though you think you are free, you are not free. And I'm sure a generations yet unborn will come to pay debts that they did not owe. And we don't, it's, it's so painful that I am living even though I think I'm free, I am a debtor. Correct. You are living even though you think you are free, you are a debtor. Even the viewers watching us, they, they, are, they are debtors. And funny enough, many persons on our side now, not on the side of leader, are not conscious of this to say, let us do the right thing. The things we can do rightly, let's do it. And people want to block it. Some of us who have been privileged to travel out, you discover that there are certain things we can do that will go a long way to sort our, our matters. Before I continue, I want to let you know that uh, those days we, we, we talked about witches and wizards in the village. So those who go, they go and eat uh, sacrifice at Joshua's and all that, we call them witches and wizards. But I think we have developed and modernized witches and wizards <laughs> in Nigeria. <laughs> when, uh, they don't eat uh, sacrifices at the junction. But they, they, they do things that result in death, mm. untold hardship for people. You are a contractor. You are asked to construct a road. Instead of construing that road, you put the money in your pocket and do a haphazard job. Anybody that die through accident on that road, you are the one. You are a witch. Yeah. You are a wizard. Yes, sir. Yeah. You are sent to go and represent the people. You get there, you, you represent your pockets and your family. Anything that happens because the hospitals are not equipped, because the right things are not done, you are a senior witch and wizard. Mm. You are the one. So the, let's for, forget those witches and wizards in the village. We have them in our hands of affairs doing evil, real evil. So coming back to what we can do to help our situation as a country. First of all, this database that we have not been able to put together or that people are not allowing us to put together is something we must consciously work at. If you drive a vehicle in the UK, nobody needs to know you. Mm. Your plate number is everything about you. And you cannot just give your car to somebody and say, uh, you want to go to Benin and come back? Okay, you use my car. No, because you know the implication. You see, people are registered to their vehicles. And you go to it. When you are driving in, the cameras observe your vehicle and they know who you are. You go to a parking space, the camera is looking at you, opens for you to come in. The number of hours or minutes you stay there, you pay, and you are holding the receipt. And by the time you are coming, the camera knows that you have paid. It will open for you. If you have not paid, it will not open for you. Hmm. We have Vivian. We have ATMs that are working. 
we have uh, NIN. NIN. These things are working, sir. Nobody can use my number to do anything except I'm the one who gave that. Why are we not harmonizing these things, sir? Why do we need to go and queue to do elections? Thereby disenfranchising many people. The police would not be a security. The soldiers would be securities. Whereas they have right to vote. They will, they will be disenfranchised completely during the period of election. Which is their constitutional right. Which is their constitutional right. Sir. Whereas, if we just, on my handset, I transfer my money. If everybody is, if we have this database, everything is digitalized, I tell you, it is the leader we want that will come there. Yes, sir. That is one aspect. The issue of freaking will not be it's here. Not there, except they are going to the computer room to go and do anything. But which will be difficult, which very difficult. difficult. Yes. <laughs> and then again, it's painful that even with the system we are running, how many people really reg register for elections? How many people are registered? If I'm in the church, brethren will tell you, I can't go there. Is uh, our votes will not count? I will not go there. Go vote. Uh -uh. Why? Any brother, any sister who refused to register for election, you qualify to register and vote. You are also practicing witch witchcraft. How I'm sorry Lord? to say uh -huh. because yeah. you are not putting the right, you are allowing the wrong people Put to be there. Uh -huh. Whatever havoc they cause, you are part of it. I have seen brethren who tell you I cannot go and vote. Why? Since since election, since I grew up to no election, there is no election. I have not voted. I am me. I'm registered, and all those who qualify my family will register. I will go and vote. Mm. If it doesn't count, that one is their blame. But you have done your own part. But opinion. I have yes. done my own part. And then those who can go into it with the fear of God, we encourage them. Let's go into it, and the people will, will be able to vote for you. These are the things we must start to do. And I pray that. This 2023 election, we are crying and shouting. God will help us. Mm -hmm. The security people, they can, they can do more than they are doing now. And sometimes you just ask yourself, we actually are the mercies of God. If uh, the, the highest points of security, and, and, uh, Kadu, and the, Kaduna, Kaduna. The, higher, the state that had the highest security outfits mm -hmm. is being devastated like this the whole what are you talking about we are all at the message of god and the only way these things will stop is when we brace up we begin to tell ourselves the truth yes, i tell you the truth whoever is imagining that one day you can make nigeria to become one religion they are just deceived and say it will never god will not even allow it it will be a fruitless, a fruitless. So that is why we must. Someone said that that day will never happen. It will not happen. It will not happen except you want to govern a place where there are no human beings. Thank you very much, my lord, my lord. You have. I, I believe our leaders and of course our brethren and listeners and watching and all these things you've been hearing is something that you put in practice for a better change in our country. Thank you very much, my lord. Uh, you've dealt well, very well on the matters of faith and of course uh, the quality of the nation now my lord to you specifically somebody will say your government your own kingdom um, <laughs> glad to know you have been the pioneer bishop and you're still the bishop of Akukedo. my lord there must be some testimonies some challenges when you enter as a pioneer mm. bishop can you just share us some of these experiences and the testimonies oh. so that we learn from there so that the young youth and people that are watching we know that life is not just easy but passing through the process of diligence you will get there let's hear the experiences and testimony my lord thank god for what he's doing and what he will yet do uh, growing up, I tell you, I have never passed an easy road. So when I see people preach, sometimes I just look at them. Because some of us preach in deception. Telling people that it's so easy. <laughs> and we'll still, I think maybe I will say I was thinking of saying something about that. Okay, sir. So starting in Akukwedo Diocese was tough, really, really tough. Number one, I was part of those who worked in the area. And then we were asked that for the diocese to survive, 
then in as far back as 20, 2007, we will need to raise three million for the first three years. Eight, three million each for the first three years. And you won't believe that we couldn't raise three million yearly for the first three years. So it was a tough place. You know, when I met some church fathers, I remember one of them who is from Akokoido, the most reverend uh, Tunde Adeleye, Adele, yeah. uh, retired Richard. bishop of uh, Kalaba and uh, Archbishop of Nanja Delta Province. He told me, say, my son, don't worry, God will help you. That is how I started, but today you can see, God will help you, just be focused. And I took that advice, that counsel was good for me. I told the people, look on me, as Peter and John said to the layman by the gate beautiful. That was my first sermon, look on me. Say, look on us. Silver or gold we may not have, but what we have, we are going to give. Yes, sir. So we started the spiritual work first teaching the people, establishing more churches, going out for crusades and evangelism in areas we felt needed it. Up to today, we are still doing that and telling the people they need to serve God. Because the first challenge in Akoko Edo we met was secretism. The people in the church are the same people in the community worshiping idols. I won't tell you so much about idol worship in Akokwedo so that you will not be looking at us as strange people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but by now you need to comfort but, those things. Ah uh, yes. Uh, there was even this other aspect of testing of the dead. So when somebody dies in some of the community if a majority of the communities, they would do a testing to know whether the person was a witch or wizard. If the person fails the test they don't bury the person. They just take the person behind the rocks. I go quite do diocese, we call diocese on the rocks because the whole area is rocky. The old Kukuruku Hills is in Agokwedo. So that tradition, sir, is an eyesore. They just take you and throw you beyond the rocks because you did not drink water. So the first thing I told them, I challenged them, I said, if you know how to test to know whether somebody is a witch or wizard, why not let us start testing the living? <laughs> to so, know whether they're, of course. So, so because when somebody has died and you are not discovering he or she, she is a witch or wizard, it's no longer useful to us. What can we do? But if somebody who is alive is a witch or wizard, we now know how to deal with them. They say, I'm too stubborn a pastor. You know, these traditions are there. Where girls will get naked and dance around town to prove their virginity and the likes. And like I said, if I tell you more, there are some festivals that you really want to wonder. How. So when we were fighting it very briefly, hmm. I remember one of the traditional rulers confronted me in the council meeting because I was privileged to become can chairman of the local government. In the, in the, in the council meeting uh, uh, for security, he was confronting me. Are you the first pastor to work here? Ah, leave us alone. After all, go and talk to your members. What was the challenge? That it is my members who are in the church that also practice this thing in the village. There is a, a, a festival in the headquarters. When they are doing it, women will not come out. If the, if the masquerade stays there for three days, the women will be in for three days. So they will go and fix it on Saturday to, to end on Sunday morning. There was a time I was in church with only three men for a congregation of over 350 people, three men were in church that day. Because the men were there with the festival, and the women were cooking, and some are afraid to come out. It was tough. It, when you say we fought battle to stop some of these things, we stopped that and run it about 10 years now. It's, it's not been done, even though in the past two years, they have attempted to do it. But God gave us instruction and said, just leave them, I know how to handle them. Like I tell you, we won't have enough time to explain what these festivals look like, look like. but they really are not acceptable. Maybe in subsequent edition, my Lord, will bring you to talk, talk about But in summary, my Lord, it has yes, not been easy all this while. Well. Easy. Then I quickly want to say, 
physically we have also done some good things good that's what i want to hear uh, today we can do a budget of over 100 million to the glory of, to god. The glory of god wow. we have uh, established some things there's a hospital there is a, um, a school even though that school we are running it for charity to uh, make people who are less privileged to do to, that to be educated then we have a uh, gas plants we have two gas plants where we said uh, this uh, dispense gas to, to people. members of the public uh -huh. those ones are doing well we have a printing press that where we print materials not just for the diocese but for everybody at the point we even apply to print some of the materials for church of nigeria uh, we have a building house in that at the women level we have a big multi-purpose the best in that environment multi-purpose hall where people come in and go out to help whatever and of course we have developed the human beings we have empowered so many persons academically then of course in their businesses and all that so somehow but most importantly we have led by example we have tried to make people understand that greediness doesn't pay anybody mm. stealing doesn't pay anybody what is not your own is not your own so claims that are unnecessary you avoid them so the pastors are growing there is an impartation mm. so people are, are going to fear god in their dealings and this discipleship thing is on and we are believing god that it will grow sincerely when you see us work together in Akokwedo, we are working as a family the pastors and the bishop and members will try to work as a family and by god's grace i can tell you he has been faithful to us. What a testimony yeah. by God's grace has been faithful to them. When we started, we didn't have any official car, nothing. You know, the f after I rode official car, after about five years of becoming a bishop, we would drive buses or whatever. And then kudos to my uncle, the one of the past governors of Edo State, uh, Professor Osereme Osumbo, okay. who one day gave us um, a brand new care sportage that was my uh, my first car i was using as a bishop and then uh, it was after that we were able to buy our first car in 2015 how many years between 2007 and 2015 that's some years now mm -hmm. well we thank god it's not so uh, that we're able to do many things and uh, our next focus now is to do a comfortable bishop cut mm. because the one I, I just built in a hurry yeah. is not really what but just because we wanted to have a place to stay yeah. uh, it was designed to house the the vicar of the cathedral okay. that i came and now completed built it i stayed as a bishop but by god's grace we are believing the next focus as Amen. a diocese is to have a befitting bishop's court Amen. and then we too will begin to think of hosting programs Amen. at the provincial level and if even, national, even at a national, national level, level. standing committee yeah. may one day come there <laughs> thank you very much my lord god god has been so faithful my lord before we just have a few minutes to wrap up you are going to take these two questions together okay. Okay. Uh, my lord uh, we hear often times people say i have the grace of god mm. so let me not just walk yeah. often times you will see it main, mainly in the life of a student a mm. student will tell you i'm going for fellowship he will not study yeah and on sunday church yeah. monday he won't go to lecture he said no i pray i fast my lord the question is apart from the grace of god in life is there any need for hard work and diligence for someone to succeed in life that's number one and um, then at the end of the day my lord you have to also give your general advice to the church and the nation at large how the nation will move forward thank you so much in a few know, minutes my lord you know i was already telling you that we will, i may have opportunity of saying it that people we, we preach a wrong gospel when we are telling uh, the church uh, these things happen fast fast i even had a case of a preacher telling people that uh, you can receive holy ghost a lot on your phone that is stealing that is arm robbery <laughs> the the bible says faith without work is dead. is dead you can't say you have grace and you are not working in fact it means you are not ready to succeed uh, if you go and say they anoint your by in fact it was is this generation i see they are anointing bio anointing notebook and anointing textbook 
you can pour the whole of anointing oil on textbook and Bible. If you don't read, you will fail. If you are not diligent. If you don't study, you, fall, you will fail. You, yes, my Lord. You, except you want to go and copy in the oil or do some mischievous things. But if you want to pass exam, you must study. It's, it's part of the system. God has made these things available. Even salvation. Salvation is available for all, to all. It's only those who are appropriate that uh, are saved. You can't say, oh, because God has done it, you fold your hands and your leg and you are looking. No, 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 no. It is against the scriptures. The scriptures say, let him who does not work, let him not eat. It's very simple. He cannot. So, grace and hard work stroke diligence is together. Mm. You can't separate them. Yes. If you say you have grace to go to Abuja, and remain in your bedroom. You'll be there the next praying. day. Praying. You may be there to rapture, sir. <laughs> so on that note, I want to advise, yes, first of all, the church, let us wake up from our slumber. Let's teach the right things. Let's not tell people what is not correct. Let's not lose focus of Jesus Christ, the reason for the church. And he says we should follow him. Anything we do that is not as unto the Lord, please let us deviate from it. Very important. Secondly, for the church, we need to be careful about materialism. We must not let that take over the gospel of Christ. It's important. And I beg our leaders to please lead the church well under God's revelation. And for us as a nation, if we must have a Nigeria tomorrow, we must take the things we are sharing on this program seriously today. Yes, sir. We must take it serious. Let us tell ourselves the truth. It is missing. People live in falsehood. We pray somebody when we know that the person is failing. Let's leave falsehood behind and tell ourselves the truth. Where it is not working, let us agree that it's not working. In the offices, everywhere we find ourselves, let's face the truth. We cannot give too many examples because of our time, but I want to tell you, you go, you are given a contract, do it in truth. Those who go to inspect these things from the offices, you want, you are asked to give jobs to people. You collect money from behind and begin to change figures, change information and the likes, so that those who don't qualify are the ones who will get that job or use that opportunity we must turn away from it let us go for the best that god has made available for how long are we going to continue in this exodus if you give people free visa to leave nigeria i tell you when uh, baba buhari will wake up in the morning and not find anybody in the country to rule because i'm sure many people will run away because of the what is happening here. Let's tell ourselves the truth. Somebody is voted to lead us for four years. After six months, they are already talking about second tenor. Mm. As if they are the owner of life. We must remember from as we started at the beginning that God is there. I say, Bishop, I'm going to account to him for every opportunity I was given to change life and I didn't do it. And as a leader of the church, hearing me, as a politician, as a worker in the secular office, just remember that God is going to ask you for the opportunities you were given while you were living here on earth. Thank you we very much, my Lord. Know that indeed that God is going to ask you 
what you have done with the opportunity well. he has given you. Very My well. Lord, we want to appreciate you for coming. Thank Out you. of your busy schedule, you have come to tell us and to tell the world on what they need to do for us to get it better right. Thank you very much, my Lord, for coming. And please, when next we call out of your busy schedule, please find time to share with us. Thank you so much. Thank I you. see it as a divine privilege Thank and you. I will not take it for granted. I'm grateful. Thank you very much. We have seen that in the course of our discussions uh, today, it has been an interesting one. The Right Reverend Jolly Onyebren, our Bishop of Dice of Akukuid Anglican Communion, have raised many issues on the things concerning ideologies, on the things concerning faith and the polity. He has made us to understand that Christ has finished everything that we need to do in terms of salvation. No need to run from pillar to post. He has also isolated the problems happening in the country and proper solutions by which you must have to do the things concerning database and get them right. Finally, he has advised for everybody to do that which is expected of us. You will do your own bit. I do my own bit. He does his own bit. Everybody will do it and get it right. Remember, the better place in this country can only exist when you must have done the whole you're supposed to do. Viewers, this is where we draw the curtain on today's episode. Join us same time, same station on another edition of the program. Until then, this is Anozechi Romso wishing you the very best and bye for now.